Okay, I'm going to stop that now. I'd imagine it sounds terrible. Yes, so um, I've been meaning to get around to doing these for a little while. In fact, I have actually done some on my channel in years gone by. That's that's how long these have been out now. It's kind of terrifying. Uh, these, for the uninitiated or for those that are very confused what's going on right now, are a series of little models. You can see my you can see my hand here. That's that's, that's how that's how little they are. They're, they're quite they're quite wee, um, which is all the more to them for getting the amount of detail they have on them. These are starship figures from the Star Trek universe of 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 well beam me up Scotty and so on and so forth. And for those of you who haven't seen the series, this is probably going to be quite boring. Um, now I'm going to start with this one because I don't have all of them, so it doesn't make a lot of sense for me to do this in any particular order, so how I'm going to try and do it is do it in sort of like a backwards order. But I'm probably going to get it wrong because I, to be honest, can't remember in what order these came out. So this is the first of three of these videos that I am going to do of these. So this is the USS Kyushu, and I'm going to take it off its little stand here so we can have a better look at it. Okay? With each of these models you get like a little transparent stand, and how they clip onto the ship there is obviously because the ships themselves do vary quite a bit. And then what we have here is the USS Kyushu. So you can see that there in its, in its little writing. Now then, this is a New Orleans class starship. It's basically a... the idea behind it is it's a scaled down version of the galaxy class starship. So I'm going to go over the model and then we'll talk a bit about the history. But first, I'm going to stand that there and it's going to kind of fall over because... Each of these come with a magazine. I'm going to zoom this out a little bit so you can actually see the magazine a little better. There we go. Now, I'm not going to go into massive detail about these because, to be honest, they're not interesting, really. Um, you, you collect these for the model. You don't really... I mean, some collectors probably care about this for the sake of collecting it, but I think everyone will agree with me, they're not that great. So, we've got some details here at the bottom about the ship itself. It's a frigate, it was launched in the 24th century, it's 340 metres long, and its maximum speed is warp 9.3. This is issue 95 of the collection, so they've been going for a few years, these now. And basically inside you get some CGI renders of the ship that we're talking about. So this being the New Orleans, that's what it is talking about. And in a lot of cases, uh, particularly with ships like this that featured literally for seconds on screen, you can imagine how much of that is literally just BS. Um, yeah, a lot of, in particular, these ones are literally just guesswork and very, admittedly astute observations, but observations nonetheless. So the history of this ship is it appeared in a graveyard scene in an episode called The Best of Both Worlds, and it was literally on screen for about half a second um, as wreckage for one of the ships that was blown up by a Borg cube. Borg being these sort of semi-robotic bad guys for the, again, uninitiated. I'm trying to keep this as simple as possible. I'm trying to make this as uh, accessible without scaring people off too much. So you do get, you know, a little bit of detail about designing the New Orleans class and looking into the best of both worlds, the episode that it was ultimately in, and yada yada and etc. It's quite verbose. Um, now then, why I'm not going to be going into too much detail on these is if I can find the actual... Yes, here we are. Um, these are wrong. <laughs> that sounds ridiculous um, for what for what they are. Basically, it's it's a diagram of a fictional starship, but it it is wrong. Um, so in the Star Trek universe, in particular, um, they take a lot of care about the design of the starships, and there are a few details about them that are universal. So the bridge is always on the top, for example. This rim around here is where phasers, or lasers if you prefer, they're not lasers, but you know, if it helps, then lasers get fired out of the ship to defend itself, and there's also torpedo bays and the rest of it. And they also have propulsion systems, so you've got impulse engines, warp engines, that allows it to go faster than light, and we also have maneuvering thrusters on the side here. Now then, I've had a few of these magazines, and you probably can't see that, but there is an, there's, there's a little engine there, and that's one of the maneuvering thrusters. The problem is, it's declared that it is a forward phaser emitter, and they've literally done this on at least two of the magazines that I've got, and God knows how many more, because like I say, I don't collect all of these, because I'm, well, I'm not rich, to be honest. So that's why we're not going to pay much attention to that, because frankly, I think it's just a bit of waffle, and also, it, oh, the cat's come in the room. Frankly, I don't think it's that important. I'm going to lock the cat out of the room now. 
Who'd own a bloody animal? Anyway, so we're going to get back to the model now. So the actual detail itself is really quite remarkable. Um, the story behind the model goes that because of the budget that they had on Star Trek The Next Generation, um, they had the hero ship, the new Enterprise, and then they had to reuse a load of older models, so Miranda-class and Excelsior-class starships, which were basically the idea behind them in the story was they were made in the previous century. So it made it look like they had a load of old ships kicking about. So that's why they started designing these. Um, they're termed playfully kit bashers, uh, basically meaning that it was taken from an Enterprise D model and then they added bits and pieces. In the original model, these bits here were actually uh, highlighter pens. In fact, you can probably make out from the shape um, exactly what they are. They were just painted and decorated. But I mean, once you're told that they are highlighters, you, you can kind of... You can't not see it, really. Um, so the ship itself, um, you've got quite a bit of detailing. Um, the windows are a lot bigger, the idea being that it's a lot smaller than the hero ship itself. Um, and it features a lot of similar design lineage. I really do like the design of this, because whilst it's similar to the Enterprise-D, it's different enough to basically say, yes, this is a, either an earlier stage or an experimental stage of that ship. Um, and also, this is a slightly odd feature, the sort of angel wings arrangement for the um, for the warp nacelles being attached to the neck. Now, I know a few people are um, a little bit taken aback by this, which is weird, given that this ship technically never appeared. Um, but, yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of that. It's just something a bit different, and it allows you to get some interesting shapes out of the secondary hull here. Um, yeah, you've got quite a bit of good detailing. So you've got um, phaser strips, you've got, obviously, uh, well, not decals, but straight printing for uh, Federation insignias and... Uh, there's the little docking lights and stuff like that. Uh, now, the, the, the sort of fragility issue with these, and I was going to get into that in a minute, but I might as well, might as well address the elephant in the room now. Um, these are extremely fragile. Um, and, yeah, I have had models like this in the past where, in fact, I think all the ones I'm going to show you eventually are in some way or another broken. Uh, I have glued this nacelle on about four or five times now, and I... I... Oh, for God's sake, yeah, so... So, yeah. Um... Yeah, I'm not really quite sure what to say about this. Um, it is a beautiful design, and I am very glad that they've actually decided to make a model of this, particularly because they really didn't need to bother. Um, story time with this as well. I actually bought this a week before it was supposed to go live. They launched it a little early on their website, and I'm glad I did, because it sold out like you would not believe. It was like monkeys panic buying bananas, I tell you. Um, so, yes, it's all basically that. Uh, if I had any issues with this, apart from how fragile it is, which... Given its size and the materials it's made of, uh, can we give that a pass? I don't really think we can, to be honest. Um, these little raised bumps here, you might be able to make them out, are escape pods. They should be a different colour, but for some reason they haven't been painted. Very unusual. Um, but aside from that, it's actually it's actually got all the detail. In fact, even very finicky I can't actually zoom in, that's how small that is, but there is little raised, um, little red highlightings and like little details like that it's extremely well detailed i have to give them credit for that much um but then obviously there's just little well bits lacking like that which just doesn't make a lot of sense when they've gone to all the care of doing finicky little things like that um so yes overall i'm happy with this model um it's a beautiful addition to any star trek fan and indeed uh, if you ever manage to get your hands on one, um, which might not actually happen given how fast they flew out the doors, um, I'd, I'd recommend getting one. They're, they're, they're quite cute little additions to anyone's, um, anyone's for fuck's sake. We'll